Okay, so so after uh, after it came out that this basically this nobody is the hope of uh, the never Trump people. Um, people started, you know, uh, digging into who is this David French guy. And of course, like we just discussed, a lot of interesting uh, shit burbled to the top of this pot. The, the thing the thing that uh, that most people latched on to, this reporter from uh, Politico, or, yeah, Politico um, found out, uh, this is an article in the National Review that one of their other writers, Catherine Lopez, wrote about a book that David French wrote with his wife, about being deployed in Iraq and being separate from his wife. And I'm just going to read uh, this, the paragraph that everyone was going around now. Uh, it says, quote, Before David left for Iraq, he and Nancy put together rules in a painfully honest conversation about human frailty. I bet the conversation was painful. Uh, I'll, I'll give it that. Um, well, and I'm there sure there was no a lot of frailty. Yeah. <laughs> a ton of frailty. Uh, frailty, actually, like that, uh, more more like that movie with Matthew McConaughey and Bill Paxton, where God tells him to kill people. Yes, that kind of frailty. Yeah. Um, okay, quote: uh, There would be no drinking during the year of separation. Nancy would not have phone conversations with men or meaningful email exchanges about politics or any other subject. Nor would she be on Facebook, where quote the ghosts of boyfriends past could contact her. When Nancy innocent, innocently started emailing about Faith with a man associated with a radio show she was on, she told David about it, and he asked her to end the relationship. David knew with his stomach clenching that the most intimate conversations a person has are about life and faith, and that the spiritual and emotional intimacy frequently lead to physical intimacy. So uh, this is the thing that people latched on to, and... I, I have to say that Molly. I get it because I mean I, I get into a, a spirited argument about the nature of the Trinity, and the next thing you know, I'm fucking boning. Oh wait, hold on, all the time, guys. I'm getting a I'm getting a phone call. Uh, Doctor Ben Carson is calling us. <laughs> oh dear! Oh, oh. Ring ring. Ben, another big get. Yeah. Ring ring. I uh, I noticed uh, you know that uh, everyone is making fun of. David France for talking about how uh, <laughs> he is afraid of people putting two in his wife's evil hole uh, from talking <laughs> about the Bible, but they used to call me Bottom Out Ben because every time that I would talk about Ephesians or uh, the Book of Daniel or especially the Book of Numbers with a female. I would be hitting it in no time flat. There is a God-shaped hole in every person's heart, but the woman's God-shaped hole just happens to be in between her two legs. <laughs> so, the thing... Uh, so... The thing Molly got mad, or a lot of people got mad about this uh, among the the sort of bow tied and bathroom warrior set is that they said that the guy from Politico made this seem like David was demanding that his wife, he was dictating terms to his wife about what she would and wouldn't do when he was away in Iraq. And, you know, they're saying, well, actually, this was really a mutually agreed upon thing between consenting adults, blah, blah, blah. But what I want to say to that is it's still pretty fucking weird. I mean, like, these are the kind of rules that you make in a relationship, like, after someone has already cheated. You know what oh, I'm yeah, saying? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, this is somebody <laughs> fucked up rules. Yeah, I mean, this is how we realize, because, like we said, our only previous discussion of David French was that article where he backed up Kevin Fat Dracula Williamson on the basic worthlessness of white poor people by telling anecdotes about, you know, I had I tried to reach out to these people uh, through my church and get them counseling and, and maybe job prospects, but they would just give up and fuck each other's wives. I think we've realized <laughs> now whose wives were getting fucked. I mean, obviously when you heard about this, everyone laughed because this is just this actually is so perfect because it shows how the popular support, the popular base of support for orthodox conservatism is just gone. You know, it's, it's yeah. just it, the, the ground completely collapsed under <clears throat> their feet. There's nothing left. What is this guy? His his poli his his platform would be war in the Middle East forever, low taxes for rich people, no trans bathrooms. Nothing that we've seen now in in the America that's been battered by 30 vicious years of neoliberal retrenchment 
just nothing that's going to move any significant percentage of the population. But if he makes his slogan, like David French, 2016, don't email my wife, I think that he Dude, could he get could do it. a pretty significant chunk of voters, especially from Trump, because I think there are millions of American men who are deathly afraid of someone emailing their wives. And Donald Trump is not going to stop someone from emailing your wife. Donald Trump's the guy who emails your wife. And I think they realize <laughs> that. And they might decide to go with French because they'll feel like he could be the guardian against a, a, the wife emails. No, yeah. But well, Bill, Bill, Crystal, Bill Crystal has spent the entire past six months like just trying and failing to stop this guy and looking like a bigger and bigger fucking asshole. And, then and now it's reached its... Yeah, it's reached its absolute... Like the fever pitch of his fucking humiliation with coming up with this guy that has neither name recognition, money, or political experience to be his like you know his his dark horse candidate against Trump. And the proof but, that uh, he and the proof that he got under Trump's skin is that Trump like shot off three or four emails about how Bill Crystal is a fucking worthless a uh, failure you know, failure. <laughs> and like wow, uh, the guy who literally tweets seven thousand times a day. Gave you three tweets in a row. Holy shit, he must be. Oh, I guess the last thing I want to say about French is um, we've we've had a good time talking about him. It's very funny, but none of no one should take this seriously. No. He's not running for president. He's not running for president. He's not even going to get near to running for president. This means nothing. It's a funny uh, distraction. It's a it's a funny little diversion. Uh, but uh, he's he. I mean, David French is going to endorse Donald Trump probably next week. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the big thing about the Never Trump people is they are all pussies. Like, all of them are cowards. You're scared, right? Maybe. Even when they stand up and put their finger in the air like you see in GT or his avatar, they <laughs> can feel their right knee buckling because they're about to kneel in front of Trump. Just like Paul Ryan did. Just like fucking Mitch McConnell did. Just like all of them. Because they have no principles and their biggest fear is that Trump will just go on without them. And they'll be like, oh, wow, these people had no fucking power. No one listens to them. They're pieces I of mean, shit. I mean, David French has principles, but it has to do with emailing his wife, using the correct bathroom, and never, ever masturbating. Yeah, no, David French has the same principles as, like, the fucking... Uh, the guy invented graham crackers, so people would stop checking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, ro the road to Wellville guy. Yeah. Okay.